Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Suzerain Rizia, our first playthrough of this new DLC for Suzerain. Uh, the game is still on sale if you're interested. Uh, Suzerain is, I believe, $5, the base game, and the DLC is like $9 right now, so you can get everything, both storylines, for 15 bucks if you're interested. I don't get anything if you do that, just to be aware if this is a series that's been interesting to you, uh, the base game is considerably on sale. I think it's normally over $15, so be aware of that. That being said, uh, we are in episode number five of this series, and things have been starting somewhat slowly. I know this is kind of a, a lot of reading type of a game. Uh, we won't be doing this exclusively over the coming weeks, uh, so we will begin to mix in other content for folks who are maybe interested in other things. Uh, but we are returning to Suzerain after our king has gone to sort of an inaugural religious ceremony type thing, saw some somewhat disturbing visions about the future, and is just sort of getting acquainted with his with his uh, kingdom and uh, in, into, into his reign. We have been spending probably too much money on things we shouldn't be spending on. Again, this is very much a... Hey, this is the first time I played it. There's no guides. There's no instructions online. There's no best practices yet. You know, we started playing this on launch day. And so I think, you know, learning what I've learned, I probably would go back and start the series over if I wanted a more clean playthrough. As it is, we probably have locked ourselves into some serious struggles with finances, maybe even energy, depending on how certain things play out. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully, with an effort, with an eye, to improving the financial situation we are about to meet with the president of swordland remember swordland is the main country in the base game uh, you play as anton rain the fourth president of swordland uh, however the game is currently a little bit ahead of the swordland main story timeline and so we are actually going to be meeting with uh, the predecessor of the main game's character, uh, Evald Alfonso, who is uh, the third president of Swordland. He's sort of known for being a bit of a, maybe a little bit corrupt, a bit of a businessman type figure uh, who struggles in his time in office before being ejected from office. But we are uh, working on potentially some trade deals or some negotiations with Swordland in this episode. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, so if you are interested in those, uh, there's a link in the description to follow me over on Twitch. You can also catch all of the live streams. We're somewhat considerably ahead, several hours ahead of where we're at right now in this episode. So if you're interested in that, link in the description. Uh, you can go over there. Uh, but without further ado, that's enough of me rambling. That's like three minutes of me rambling. So let's just go ahead and jump back into this. We're about to meet the president of Swordland on our personal yacht uh, in, uh, on the sea. Third batch. I'm not going to sell more. Those were short-term emergency acts to raise funds for shipping and other things. My royal yacht, the Riz... Or Rizania, smoothly cleaved through the waters. Am I really just totally chill with being on a yacht after I was in a boating accident where my wife died not that long ago? <laughs> just no fear of the sea. I stood on the deck next to Ed Ewald Alfonso, president of Swordland. After hours of diplomatic formalities in Pals Resna, the sea breeze felt amazing. Alfonso removed his jacket and looked up admiringly at the white cable bridge that connected Port Drezon's two halves. What a great idea this boat tour was. It would have been a pity to spend our entire visit trapped in a stuffy old palace. He rushed to correct himself. A beautiful, beautiful, elegant old palace, your majesty. The sharp, sharp horn let out a blast as we passed beneath the bridge. Show Alfonso the new town. I directed the Swordish president's attention to the glass skyscrapers of the new town, where Rizia's banks and major corporations were headquartered. See, this is what I like about your country. You're not afraid of the future. My grandmother was definitely thinking ahead when she made those trade deals with Swordland years ago. Liza the Great. It's not li easy living in the shadows of our predecessors. The Colonel was no great fan of monarchies, as you recall. Me? I'm more flexible. 
For an anti-monarchist, he behaved an awful lot like a king. By the end, maybe. I wish we'd parted on our parted ways on better terms. I know one man who's happy for a clean break, though. Gus manager emerged from the ship's cabin, clutching a bottle and grinning triumphantly. Evold, they have it! I tried Kanaduto exactly once from a Rizian chef in Holsword, who smuggled it over in a steamer trunk. Haven't stopped thinking about it ever since. He turned to me apologetically. Our mutual friend Rusilio mentioned your yacht, had an excellent wine cellar, and well, I couldn't help myself. Rusty has certainly sampled enough wine to know what he is talking about. I wouldn't mind gaining some first-hand knowledge myself. Butler! Pobble smoothly appeared from behind us with three glasses. Gus handed him the bottle. Excellent choice, Mr. Manager. Please allow me. He filled the glasses and handed one to each of us. This should taste of sherry and black pepper with a faint hint of leather. We raised our glasses. Morgana Vescor! I'm a cultured man. I know what the swordish people say. Two swordish men smiled politely. We don't usually toast with that phrase, but nice pronunciation. Oh no! Was that a faux pas? Hey, Tortuga. I'm enjoying it. Um, I do feel like maybe it telegraphs some things. Well, I guess we'll see. I haven't gotten... I don't know if that's really gonna happen. But I do feel like it telegraphs some things that maybe the previous game is more subtle on. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I just... I, I hope it's not too short, because the developers were pretty adamant that it's much shorter than the original game's story. Okay... Alfonso's expression bordered on disbelief. All apologies to Geralt of Ribery, but this is in fact the best wine I have ever tasted. I told you, I know certain swordish movers and shakers who would kill to have access to a beverage of this caliber. Which brings me to the deal I suggested. Ah yes, the free trade of Rizian wine for swordish whiskey. As good a way as any to get our relations flowing again, if you'll pardon the pun. Swordish whiskey? I'd have to taste that first. Rizians don't drink whiskey? Why wouldn't we drink whiskey? Is that a thing? I'd have to taste it first. I was saving this until after dinner, but here you go. He opened his attaché and pulled out a bottle of Ellery Maroon, 30-year-old. Our turn to be the connoisseurs, your majesty. Butler! Three tumblers! No ice! Everybody get drunk! Okay. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were trying to get me drunk! Just a small sip for me, to make sure my people aren't getting an inferior product. I'll do the toast this time. How do your people say it? Aprozo. We drank, the flavor rushed over my tongue. Wood smoke and forest moss tapering off to a sweet, silky smooth finish. Why would anyone want to drink something that tastes like trees? It's heavenly. Like tasting the very soul of Elri itself. Last I saw your treasury crone was in the cabin, reading over the terms of the proposal. Shall we haul her up here and hash this out? Don't call Mr. Mrs. Werner a crone. She's one of my most capable counselors. I apologize on behalf of my minister. I told him to leave his baser impulses at home. I assure you Swordland is making progress on the status of woman. Some of my most trusted ministers belong to the pharaoh sex. Pobble ducked into the ship's cabin and re-emerged with Elena, my treasury counselor, looking slightly seasick. Pardon my absence, gentlemen. Despite my vagish ancestry, I never warmed to boat travel. The draft agreement seems sound, but I had a question about the, second, uh, the section regarding quantities. You're proposing an equal amount of wine and whiskey be traded per year when more demand currently exists for the former than the latter. Uh, 
Is there another way we can rephrase this, Mr. President? Good catch, Mrs. Ms. Werner. We can change that section if you like. Quantities subject to market demand. Demand in Rizia will skyrocket once Elroy Maroon hits the market. That's... trust me. So, is it a trade, your majesty? Definitely. Expect to see our bar serving Swordish whiskey by next year? Yes, sure. Now, can we get to the real reason why you're here? Um... Sure. Uh, it is not bombing the Reich finish. I think you can see that. Excellent, your majesty. And Well, who knows, finish. Maybe we will begin bombing a Reich. It, it's not the bombing the Reich you're thinking of, though. Excellent, your majesty. Another reason for me to return to this gem of a country. The yacht lingered at the mouth of Sapana Delta as the sun lowered in the sky, turning the water to a turquoise gold. As much as Swordland's most valued citizens would appreciate your wine, we believe there's something else they'd find even more stunning. He gestured at his surroundings and then down at the short sleeve he was wearing. Have you thought of Rizia's untapped tourism potential, your majesty? Uh, no riffraff. Uh, I'm afraid our conflicts with our neighbors would scare off visitors. I'm listening. Port Drezan is gorgeous enough, but your beaches. I know that for a long time, international tourists stayed away from Valkyrness Coast because of the delicate situation with Pals. It's Pally. Pal A. Pal A, Mr. Manager. Rhymes with Bal A. Ballet. Oh, sorry. I never had the occasion to speak the name aloud. My point is that it might finally be time to bring your underdeveloped shores to life. I took the liberty of hiring a designer to draw this up. He reached inside his jacket pocket and pulled out a sheet of paper with a sketch on it. I recognized the beach it depicted. It was picturesque stretches of sand and monkas, not far from the palace where I'd grown up. Right on the coastline, the designer had placed a sprawling complex with swimming pool and tennis courts. On it was a sign, Cornati Resort Valkyrids. Mm. Would that be the senior or junior, Konrati? You've done your research, I see. This is Marcel's initiative, along with certain other members of the Lothberg group. Our partners are considering significant investments along the Valkyrie coast. If all, we all, if all went well, the Konrati resort would only be the first step. I'm aware of how your nobles see swordish oligarchs, I'm also aware that their world-renowned riches have diminished with each successive generation. Change is not merely inevitable, Your Majesty. It is the only way to preserve the lifestyle to which you are also accustomed. Your grandmother understood that. I am the king! We don't need Swordland's help to stay wealthy. Lizia wouldn't have wanted a bunch of fat, sunburned, vulgar. I don't know that we want to be quite that uh, offensive. Monkeys is going to be the site of our expensive shipyard. Oh, well, you can watch us build ships from the beach. Uh. I guess two seems the last least committal. I don't know that I want to agree to this. I don't really know, like... I don't know. We know you've got Queen Beatrice providing her protection. We just wanted to offer you some extra insurance. But we'll assume that's a no on the proposal then. Let me confer with Elena. The Swordish visitors waited outside as Elena and I walk into the cabin to talk.
So what do you think? If I may speak freely, I don't think it's a bad idea. Why not? You must remember that I'm from Valkyrnus. I grew up just minutes away from those beaches, but it wasn't until I became a counselor that I had the pull to bring my family there. That resort wouldn't just open the Valkyrus coast up to Swordland, it would open it up to the rest of Rizia. Thank you for sharing your opinion. We stepped back out of the waning sunlight and rejoined Alfonso and Gus' manager. I don't know. The only resort you need is a last resort. Hmm. One deal is enough today, gentlemen. I don't want to piss off the rest of the nobility. His name is Pabal Adiria. Show some respect. Gotta keep my butler happy. He's my childhood friend. Trade deal with Swordland. Does that accomplish anything? Diplomacy. Trade deal agreement between Rizzi and Sword. Okay. So maybe that'll help the economy. Rizia signs historic beverage deal with Swordland. Swordland's official diplomatic visit to Rizia in over 30 years ended yesterday. President Evald Alfonso and his development minister, Gus Manager, flew back home with several cases of Canavuto wine, an apt parting gift from His Majesty following newly signed beverage trade agreement between the two countries. Rizia and Swordland traded peacefully under the reigns of Queen Liza and King Edmund, but relations soured under the tyrannical former leader Colonel Sol. We'll raise a glass to the reopening of trade channels and the upcoming availability of Swordish whiskey in our country. Non-interventionism gains momentum in Arcasia under Devereux. Charles Devereux of the Reform Union Party is emerging as a potent force in Arcasian politics, ch challenging President Dwight Walker's vision of Arcasian capitalism, advocating for reduced military interventions and favoring detente with United Cantana. Devereux approach, approach marks a stark departure from Walker's policies. His call for rapproch, rapprochement signifies a potential shift in Arcasian foreign policy. Resonating with a segment of the populace dissatisfied with the current aggressive stance, this movement underscores a growing divide in Arcasian political thought, reflecting the nation's struggle to balance its superpower status with evolving global rivalry tensions. Okay. I didn't even think of Queen Beatrice in signing that agreement. She might be pissed off at us. Uh, Alice Springs Leisure Club closed amid homosexual revelations. <laughs> what? Police in Montclair conducted a raid of the so-called health retreat, Alice Springs Leisure Club, following a tip-off that the bathing facility was in fact a gathering place for the local homosexual community. During their unscheduled visit, the same-sex couples were indeed found to be engaging in illegal activity. They were promptly arrested, and the Leisure Club shut down. The governor of Terador has issued a stern rebuke to the Azros of Cartesi Montclar after the provincial military conducted exercises near the Pale's administrative district. Labeling the drills an unnecessary provocation, the governor called for restraint and dialogue to address any interprovincial tensions. Okay. Conversation with Vina. Interesting. Um, so we've got that. We've got two things. We've got a commission, Taurus family statues. 
There's been a proposition to erect statues across the nation in honor of the grand legacy of House Torres. The choices are varied ones that honors King Valro, another showcasing the late king alongside his son, Romus, or a grand portrayal of the entire recent Taurus lineage. Yeah, we're trying to build up the, the authority of the monarchy, remember. We are trying to say, like, we're all so great, so... I, I know we don't want to spend all of our authority necessarily, but... Something to consider. Ooh, apparently you get turn you get additional authority based on power projection. So maybe our shipyard will help with that too. Also, I'm assuming our shipyard cost for gas won't go up until the shipyard's complete. I'm hoping. Alright, so time to go have a conversation with my daughter. It was low tide. The waves of the Antasean Sea lapped at the sands below the cliffs of Monkes. A trail was carved into the cliffside, just wide enough for a single horse. Vina picked up speed as she guided her mare, Lizzie, around a sharp curve. Faster! Remember what I taught you! What, that you must ride fast? I'll ride faster myself. Meet you at the beach! I watched her fly down the trail. She'd thrown herself into horseback riding after Le Lena died. We kept a few horses in Port Grazon as well, but Lizzie was her favorite. I followed her at a leisurely pace, taking time to gaze back up at the hill at Pals Moncas. With Hubertus Torres governing the province from his own estate, I was free to visit my old home and its private beach any time I liked. At the bottom of the trail I, it w was a sheltered cove where Pobble had laid out a picnic lunch. I dismounted and sat next to Vina. You really didn't have to come back to Monquez with me, Father. I just wanted a chance to relish this beautiful sword-free beach. Quality time together. Deciding the fate of the country together. That screams quality time to me. My mother was right about a few things. It's not healthy to spend too long in those chambers. She picked up a lobster salad sandwich from the picnic basket and nibbled at it. A solemn silence descended as we started, stared at the waves. Eight years since she died. When I'm here, it might as well have been yesterday. When who died? <laughs> we already said I was the uh, aggrieved and uh, distraught father, so I can't... Uh, It hurts every time we come back here. You almost died too that day, you know. Sometimes I wish I had. I can't even dip my toe in the water or it'll all come rushing back. The memories rushed over me. The sickening sound of the boat had made as, it gir as its girders splintered, calling out for my wife over and over until my voice finally gave out. The beep on the hospital machines as I told Vina to say goodbye to her mother one last time. Was there anything I could have done to save her? In another timeline? Were there three of us sitting on this beach instead of two? Tears formed at the corners of my eyes. I started sobbing. Vina appeared at a loss for words. She tentatively put her hand on my shoulder. I'm so sorry, Father. I didn't realize it was still so fresh for you as well. Grief isn't a straight line, my daughter. It ebbs and flows like the tide. It's always high tide for me, and I'm not sure I even want to come up for air. But you must be feeling the same way about Mother, otherwise you would have remarried by now. Eight years, and not so much as a date. What's the sudden interest in my love life? Well, say you were to meet someone. What if you had a son? Who would be your successor when you died? Oh my goodness. I can't even trust my daughter. All she cares about is her spot in line. <laughs> uh, 
I'd still declare you next in line. Rizia needs a queen like you, and the rules were meant to be broken. I'd still declare you next in line. Rizia needs a queen like you. She's gonna freaking kill me if I... I bet you they're gonna have me marry someone. Then we'll have a kid, and depending on my relationship with her, she may kill me. Like Queen Liza said, the eldest sibling should inherit the throne no matter their sex. Thank you, Father. It means a lot knowing all my preparation won't be for nothing. The tide was beginning to lap at the edge of our blanket. We stood up and pulled it away from the water. Father, one more thing. What? It's just... Grandmother's always on about how I need to find the right husband. How important is that to you? Really, who am I marry? Do you have any candidates in mind? <laughs> no. But do you? Are you going to marry me off like your father did to you? My arranged marriage was the best thing that ever happened to me. You and mother were lucky to fall in love. Most such marriages are miserable. You can always take a lover on the side? Oh my god! <sighs> I might suggest a potential husband or two. But I'll never drag you to the altar. I'm interested in hearing these suggestions. <laughs> she hopped she hopped aside astride Lizzie. Sorry to run, but one of the countesses from my school days has invited me for tea. She's just a few estates down the beach from here. You're going to see that guy who's the son of the person who shot me. Titus, send one of your men to keep an eye on her. Uh... I don't know. What do we do here? She'll probably be pissed at me if I send someone to keep an eye on her. Spy on her. Oh, whatever. Go have fun. If something happens, I can always, uh... I can always have another kid, right? <laughs> then I can really get married. The trip back up into the palace felt a lot longer on the way down. I staggered through my doorway. Back so soon. I hope I packed enough food for you. Where's the princess? The princess is in another castle. <laughs> I let her go out against my better judgment. Mario! Do -do 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 -do. She's more than old enough to go out alone. You can't protect her from everything. There's a warm bath waiting for you upstairs in case you're sore from the ride. Only if it's got bubbles! <laughs> you read my mind, Pobble. All part of the job. S what? Press F to scrub right arm. Press F to scrub left arm. Scru press F to scrub right leg. What? Bath minigame? Romus? Yes. Does Pobble have a thing for us? 
Was that, like, homosexual club thing foreshadowing? Just... just wondering. I'll dry off without one. <laughs> Uh, okay, come in. <laughs> Replay next game. Scrub the other leg. What is going on? Is he really gonna... <laughs> uh, okay. Is there another reason you wanted to come in? Actually, there was something I wanted to bring up without the guards around. <laughs> that sounds kind of serious. It might be. Or it might not be. I'm not sure. There was a small stool next to the tub. He moved over it and sat with his back to me. Well, what did you want to tell me? Listen, Rome... How much have they told you about your father's death? Not a lot. Do you suspect something? Well, this is what I know. Back when my dad was still alive, he showed me every single plant in the Palace Resna Gardens. Oh. It was poison. One of them was Mad Dragon Dragora. Big green leaves, pretty purple flowers. He told me you can make an ex extract from its roots. Little bit helps you sleep, more than that causes delirium, and a lot stops your heart. I think I see where this is going. I know it seems preposterous, but the night His Majesty King Valero died, I brought him his evening cup of tea as usual. He seemed in a, d in a daze, as if he didn't recognize me. A few days afterwards, I went out to the part of the garden where my father had planted this madragoa. Nothing but a smooth patch of dirt. If he was poisoned, the coroner would have caught it. Who was around the palace that night? The Queen Mother, obviously, Grand Viseman, Ignicus, Titus, and his men. Ah, and your uncle was meeting with Luc Lucita Ezro prior to her council appointment. So, quite the list. Not including me, of course. When was the last time you saw the plants? A few months before that, maybe? I remembered the flowers blooming. So yes, it's possible their disappearance has nothing to do with the king's death. Could someone have slipped it in his supper? I was tasting all of his majesty's food at that time, so whoever it was would have had to be very creative. If he was poisoned, wouldn't the coroner have caught it? Madrigoia is a naturally occurring substance. It may not have raised a flag. All right. Let's say father was indeed poisoned. What would have been the motive? We both know his majesty had a long list of enemies, but the goal could have simply been to put you on the throne. Or I'm next. No matter what, I would urge caution. There were so few people he trusted by the end. If my suspicions are correct, it means one of them took advantage of that trust. And all of those people are still in your inner circle today. What if you did it, and you're trying to throw me off your trail? <laughs> uh, okay, let's look into this further. What do you think I should do next? I wish I knew. Try finding out as much as you can without raising suspicion, I guess. Keep an ear out for myself. Palace gossip gets around. 
Trust me, old, old friend, I'll always have your back. Speaking of backs, can you give mine a scrub while you're here? What? Um... Okay, I don't know what this means, but... Pobble? I'm happy there's one... I'm not gonna go... I, I do think there's probably some Pobble romance thing here. I could be totally off base, but it certainly seems like there's, there's avenues to push this further. I'm happy there's one member of my inner circle I can trust. I didn't want him to stay in chat also because if my guards are spying on me, then that's just ammunition they can use against me, right? They'll be like, oh, see, the king isn't fit to rule because he's actually a homosexual. Even if, he, even if I'm not, even if the guy's just hanging out there, they'll be like, the two were in the bath together. Preparations underway for 24th Annual Vesic Rizian Friendship Day. We're building lots of stuff. Walker plan drives economic growth. Okay. New parliamentary factory in Rumberg. Sorry about the toxic chemicals. We need the gold. Private audience with Golden Guard. Revolutionary malevolent propaganda ban. Uh, okay, so I don't have much authority left. I've pretty much spent it all. Books, magazines, and pamphlets from malevolent countries such as United Cantana, Vagsland, and Gamlet have been reaching our shores. These seemingly innocuous reading materials have the potential to lead to the spread of socialist thought among the populace. Allow their propaganda, which reduces our authority. Ban their propaganda or ignore it. How is ban it, well I guess, how is allow it and ignore it different? Or is allowing it specifically making a government policy? Whereas ignoring it is just pretending it doesn't exist, I guess? Um, Alright, we'll ban the propaganda, I don't, I don't know. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for today's episode. We met the president of Swordland. We're getting ready to go meet the president of Valen, sort of the dictator of Valen. Uh, but this is as good of a spot as any to wrap this up. Um, a little bit of a shorter episode today, but this was sort of toward the tail end of one of the streams, and the next bit is going to be too long. I don't, I don't generally want to post hour and a half long episodes, so we'll cut it apart here, and then we'll join ourselves next time. Uh, as we head to Zill to try and, uh, you know, hopefully make progress on the handover of Zill to Swordland. But with that being said, that's going to do it for today's episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.